Hey YouTube, you found me. Welcome to this bonus tutorial for Making the Sun. Why bonus? It's not a planet, and season one of Making is Making Planets. Plus, it's featured pretty heavily in the Mercury teaser, and I figured some people out there would want to know how I made it. And apologies yet again to our non terrestrial viewers. This tutorial will show you how to create any G type main sequence star. Of course, with judicious use of After Effects' colour tools, you could make it any colour you wish. And it's really quite amazing, might I add, that of all the human activity you are choosing to observe, you've picked my YouTube videos. You know, there's literally millions of cat videos, right? I'm going to be using three Video Copilot free plugins Sabre, Color Vibrance, and the Orb plugin as the Sphere Maker. Links to install these are in the description below. Everything I'm doing will work just as well with either VC Element or CC Sphere. Element has a price tag, of course. If you can't use Orb or want to learn how to use CC Sphere for planets, then check out my Making Mercury using CC Sphere tutorial. This will get you started, and you'll be able to adapt everything from that tutorial to work on this one. That said, I'll keep an eye on the comments section and try to help you out if you get stuck. A couple of quick facts about the Sun, because if I'm going to rip off better YouTubers then I may as well do it properly. The Sun is a near perfect sphere of hot plasma, powered by hydrogen fusion. It has a diameter of 1.3 million kilometres, or 109 times the diameter of Earth. The scale of space is always truly massive. But did you know that 99.86% of the total mass of the solar system is the Sun? Everything else, Jupiter, Saturn, Earth, comprises those 0.14%. It is so far away that light takes 8 minutes to reach us. 6 million tonnes of hydrogen are converted to helium every second in its core. The closest thing the Sun has to a surface, the photosphere, has a temperature of only 6,000 degrees Kelvin while the corona tops out at 2 million degrees. So clearly, if man wants to visit the sun, we'll have to do it at night. I'm so, so sorry. Let's just get on with it. Confession time. This sun tutorial is an adaptation of Andrew Kramer's own sun tutorial. I've been playing around for years with suns, and even produced a tutorial of my own for Creative Cow using Cinema 4D. Andrew's is built in After Effects, but focuses on the surface of the star, where he adds in a lot of detail. The trouble with this is he can't do that many other shots as his stands. So this tutorial takes Mr. Kramer's as a starting point. To that end, let's start by visiting this other video copilot webpage and download the Clean Seams project. Orb doesn't really need to use Clean Seams, especially if you change the UV type to box. But Clean Seams helps out with CC Sphere and Element, and so it's where I'll start. So, I have a comp, 1920 by 1080 and I've added the Clean Seams comp as a layer. I'll create a new solid, make it comp size, name it Sun Orb, and add VC Orb to it. We'll set the radius to 400 pixels, and in the map section I'll set the diffuse layer to be the clean seams comp. I'll drag the brightness up to its maximum. Now, if I turn the diffuse off for a moment, and set it to none, you'll see that there's a 3D-ness to the sphere. If we expand the materials section and reduce the diffuse down to zero, our shaded white sphere becomes a grey disc. I couldn't spot what this was doing, but seeing as the entire sun is meant to be bright and certainly not shaded, this corrects it, which was subtle but still noticeable when I had the diffuse texture. I'll reset that now in maps. The fractal noise in clean seams doesn't match up to the sun tutorial, so let's take care of that. Double click on clean seams, and then double click to open the fractal noise comp. First let's delete the top layer. We don't need two solids, we can add two fractal noises to one solid, and this has the advantage that we can then save the effect as a preset. On the remaining solid, open up the fractal noise, change the type to dynamic twist, set the brightness to zero and drop the transform scale down to 50. 
Now, add in a new fractal noise layer to the same solid. Set this type to dynamic. Set the contrast way up to 230 and the brightness down to minus 80. And let's up the complexity to 8.4. Now let's add an expression to control the evolution. Alt click on the Evo stopwatch and in the expressions area type time times 100. Then we'll keep the animation bubbling along without needing keyframes. Finally, set the blending mode to screen so we can see both effects. So if you want to, you can now select both fractal noises, go up to animation and choose save preset. This is a really handy way of saving useful effects for easy access later. I do this a lot with tutorials I watch. If we switch back to our sun comp, the surface looks a lot more boily and sun-like. We're back in Andrew's recipe now, so let's add a glow. Set it to be alpha based and the threshold to 100% and increase the radius to 150. Add a second glow, also set it to alpha and the radius this time to 30 and increase the intensity to 2.5. Now, in the original, Andrew uses his free plugin VC Color Vibrance, but it used to crash a bit for me. I found if I download the latest version that's linked to his website and replace the plugin, it seems to have sorted it. Add it and set the color to orange. Okay, so this is where Mr. Kramer and I diverge. If you feel I've just been rehashing someone else's tutorial, yeah, I have, but it would have been weird to tell you to go to his site, watch the tutorial, and then return halfway through. First things first, we're going to make this available in 3D space, as we're going to attach other 3D layers to it. To do this, go to Layer, New, Null Object. Hit Enter and name the object Sun Null. Make it a 3D layer using the toggle option at the bottom of the comp and clicking on the 3D checkbox. Now, hit P to view the position keyframes. Switch to the Sun Orb layer, expand the VC Orb effect controls and using the pick whip on the position keyframe, link it to the null's positions. Now my null object controls the position of the orb. As it happens, it was already set to the same coordinates, but this helps with the next steps. So we're going to add a Corona. Actually first we'll stop, open a bottle of Corona, drink that, and then continue. Create a new solid by going back to Layer, New, Solid, make it square, about 1000 by 1000 pixels, and give it an orange colour. You can always use Tint later on to change this if you don't get it quite right. And click OK. Hit Enter and name it Corona. Using the Mask tools, change the Mask type to Ellipse and double click it to add a circular mask to the solid. Now let's make it a 3D layer and parent it to the null object and drag it below the Sun Orb layer. Now, let's hit MM to open the mask options, set the feather to 250, and reduce the expansion to minus 250 pixels. Looks like we need to increase the size of the solid. Hit S to switch to the scale, and increase the scale until you're happy. The Orb layer looks a little weird though. Let's change the transfer mode to screen. That's better. And do the same for the corona, in case we want anything to pass behind it. If we now create a 3D camera by going to Layer, New Camera, and using the Unified Camera tool to fly around our sun, you'll see an immediate problem. The corona is in 2D. Make sure the corona layer is selected. Anyone getting thirsty yet? Then go to Layer, Transform, Auto Orient, and choose Orient Towards Camera. You'll see I use this technique a lot for creating spheres which don't need to have textures. Okay, so we're almost done. We need to add the solar flares next, and I have spent years struggling with this and haven't got a complete answer yet, but this is what I do these days. Create a new solid, make a comp size and name it particle flares.
And now let's add CC Particle World. Turn off all the grids and guides. Leave the birth rate at 2 and set the longevity to 5 seconds. Now in the producer section, I could use an expression to link the positions to the 3D null, but this tutorial is already really long so let's skip that. And instead in the comp panel, let's use the pick whip to link the radius y and radius z values to the radius x value. That way we don't have to change things separately. Open up the physics section, set the velocity and gravity to 0. Now for the radius x, let's move the timeline along a bit so that the particles are being produced and increase radius x until we can just see the particles outside the photosphere. Next we need to create a texture for the particles. Create a new solid, layer, new, solid. 200 pixels square is more than needed. Name it Tex. Drag on the fractal noise effect. Set the type to dynamic. Check the invert box and set the brightness to minus 35. Set the transform scale to 190. And let's now alt click on evolution and in expressions type time times 150. We need the particles to move away though. So in the offset turbulence, alt click on the stopwatch and type the following expression. X equals time times minus 50 semicolon y equals 0 semicolon square bracket x comma y end square brackets you can now hide the layer switch back to the particle flares layer and cc particle world open up the particle settings and set the type to be textured faded disk open up the texture settings and choose our text layer make sure to switch the other drop down from source to effects and masks if you're using an older version of After Effects, you'll need to pre-compose the text layer. Set the texture time to birth, drop the rotation speed to 10, and let's set the birth and death colors to something closer to the oranges we've been using. Finally, set the transfer mode to add, and set the layers transfer mode to screen. Cool. So, one last effect to add. I want a more pronounced sun flare, so I'm going to use the other free video copilot effect to achieve it, Sabre. Duplicate the Corona layer by selecting it and then going to Edit Duplicate. Hit Enter and rename this Sabre Flare. Hit M to reveal the mask and delete it. Using the Ellipse Mask tool, click on the center of the layer the null object's coordinates should help you locate it, and holding down shift and control, drag a mask until it matches the radius of the sphere. Shift centers the mask, and control locks the aspect ratio. Drag the layer above the sun layer. Now let's add Saber. Select the fire preset, leave most of the settings as they are, but drop the core size down to 2. Expand Customize Core and change the type to Layer Masks. On the layer's own settings, set the scale so the mask is just touching the edge of the orb sphere. Back in Sabre, open up Distortion. Set the amount to 80, the wind speed to 0 and the noise speed to 0.1. In the core distortion, set the bias to 1.5. Set the noise speed to 0 0.1 and the wind speed to 0. Finally, in alpha mode, set it to mask core and invert masks. Probably going to need to scale the saber layer to get it to line up. And that's it. Phew, that was a long one. Saber isn't really 3D, so if you want a big sweeping camera move, you're going to lose it a little. I could go on, I could add a star field and mask it out around the sun, I could add a lens flare for the center, and one day I'll figure out how to do a satisfactory 3D solar flare. If I do figure it out, I promise I'll share it here. Thanks very much for watching, for sharing, for subscribing, for commenting. 
please let me know in the comments if there's anything else you want me to cover. But that's it for now. <laughs>